Good evening, everyone. Um, I am trying an experiment this evening where my laptop is currently streaming to LinkedIn um, and my phone is streaming to Facebook. So let's see if it works. Um, I might just need to turn my sound off on my laptop so that it doesn't interfere. I am trying an experiment this evening. Hey, it works. <laughs> um, anyway, so thank you for joining me this evening. Um, my plan this evening is to kind of give you an introduction, shall we say, to some of the stuff that I'm going to be covering on this time next week's introductory session to my new five day challenge, Ignite the Phoenix. So Ignite the Phoenix is going to be all about how to really work out who you are and what you want from your life. So all those things that whenever you say to somebody, oh, wouldn't it be nice to have such and such? And they turn around and say, yeah, but why would you want that when you've got all of this? Or you should be grateful for what you have. It's selfish to want more. You've got such an amazing life. So many other people would love your life. Blah, 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 blah. It's all noise. If you want extra, you can go for extra. And that's why I've kind of merged my... Um, anyone who's followed me for a little while will know that I usually do three challenges, one of one after the other and on a three month cycle. I've merged them together, added some extra bits and nearly finished with the workbook that's going to go with it. Um, so there's going to be no slides, which is new. Uh, I will be using the Remarkable, um, my kind of paper, electric notepad thingy to go through the workbook with you guys. Um, and there will be space for you to fill in the workbook as we go. But that's not entirely what this session's about. So that's a brief introduction to why I'm doing this. But what I want to do today is I want you to introduce you to your imagination. Hello, imagination. Because there are so many of us, we can daydream like God knows what, like anybody's business when we're small. Then we go to school and it kind of gets drummed out of us. Live in the real world. Even worse, when we get to teenager and adult and we're living in the real world, paying the bills and all of that rubbish. We kind of lose the ability to dream, which is really wrong, in my opinion, and many other people's opinion. So what I want to do this evening is to help you to be able to visualise the life that you want to live. OK, so it's going to be a short kind of visualisation session. Um, where I'm going to show you how you can kind of get calm, get relaxed, get really into yourself. So not a meditation, not a mindfulness, not that sort of thing. Um, an awareness of who you are and what you want. Um, and then Ignite the Phoenix is going to take that even further this time next week um, to help you to realise that it's not selfish to want those things. And actually, this is how you get it's only a three step process. And step number one is visualizing. So I want to help you with a quick visualization this evening. So first off, I'm going to help you get calm, get you aware. Then I'm going to walk you through a very short kind of visualization where I'm going to take you on a journey, just a little journey. Um, so I want you to practice using your imagination um, to be able to see and to show yourself that actually your imagination is pretty damn good because it is. I don't care who you are or anything like that. Our imagination is amazing and we are visual beings. We see in pictures. Um, so yeah, and then that basically opens the door for you to then really focus in on what it is that you want and to build that image. It's the image that when you close your eyes in bed at the end of the day, that's the first image you see. I do it every night. I go to sleep. Um, or I go to bed, I close my eyes, and I'm transported from the bedroom where I physically am to the bedroom where I will be, that is my goal. And I go to sleep as if I'm already there and I'm already that person. And I wake up in the morning exactly the same way. And it's awesome. <laughs> it's a really, really good, really, not humbling, but really intuitive way of kind of getting in tune with who you are because if you then act as if you are that person already it can't help but come to you and there are millions of people around the planet who have done just that I have done it 
and I'm doing it again right now. So, to get aware, to get calm, to get... <sighs> the way I do it is through belly breathing, which is, and don't take offence, we all breathe really badly because we're lazy. Uh, it's just humans. We're just kind of lazy, inherently lazy, which is a little bit annoying sometimes. But we breathe really shallowly, or we breathe with our chest. Where actually our diaphragm is right down at the top of our stomach. And it kind of goes around the bottom of your rib cage. So if you can train yourself at least a couple of times a day to breathe right down deep into your belly, you get a belly breath. Um, if you've not done it before, you may get a little dizzy. Uh, so don't panic. Just make sure you're sat down. You're not going to faint or anything, but you might feel a little bit dizzy. Um, so I always say do this sat down, feet on the floor, kind of hands wherever's comfortable. Um, so mine are just like on my knees or just in my lap. And the idea is, is that you breathe in through your nose and you breathe into your stomach. You kind of push your stomach out for the first two thirds of the breath and then you fill your chest with the last third. So it's the deepest, deepest breath you've ever taken today. Um, and the idea is, is your shoulders aren't going to move. OK, once you've breathed in, you then breathe out through your mouth. And if you're having a really tough time or you real, feel really overwhelmed or feel really ah, breathe out like you're breathing out through a straw like you're blowing out but make your exhale longer than your inhale so we're going to do three of those breaths and then i'm going to ask you to close your eyes nobody can see you other than you or anyone in the room so either close your eyes or take a soft gaze um, and i'm going to walk you through just to show you how powerful your imagination is okay so three deep breaths in three deep belly breaths so breathing in through your nose into your belly and into your chest and out through your mouth. In through your nose. And out through your mouth. And last one. Into through your nose to your belly. and out through your mouth. Now, close your eyes or take a soft focus. And I want you to think of a forest. So evergreen trees, deciduous trees, um, big tall pines, very small um, bracken on the floor, a path through the trees that isn't man-made, it's kind of like a, a deer track. So it's, um, it's muddy, there's rocks in the way, there's vegetation on either side. It's wide enough to walk, but you wouldn't want to push a buggy or a stroller down it. And you're just going to take a walk through the trees. And as you walk, you can feel the breeze on your face. And because you can feel the breeze on your face, you can hear it running through the top of the pine trees. So there's a very gentle wind noise running through the trees. So you can hear the trees swaying. You can hear the creaks of the older trees. And you continue walking. You can feel the muddy, sandy soil beneath your feet. It squelches a little bit in places. But it's soft. You can feel it soft. And then the smells start coming to you. So you've got the pine needle smell. You've got that lovely smell after rainfall because it has recently been raining. You can hear the drips coming off of the leaves and you continue walking. There's sunlight coming into the forest and you can feel the warmth of it on your face in patches. Because as you walk under the thicker trees and you're in the shade, you can't feel the sun, but as you come out into the sun, you feel the sun onto your, on your face. And you keep walking along the sandy, sandy, soily, sandy soil path. You can hear the rustling in the trees, rustling in the undergrowth on either side. A bird takes flight, catches your attention, and you keep walking. And you come to the edge of the forest. And ahead of you is a wide open meadow or field. 
and in the distance you can see the rocky coastline and the sea coming in and a little bay. So the noise of the waves is going to reach you now. Noise of seabirds as well and the breeze brings a salty scent to your nose and you walk out into the meadow. The grass is about knee to thigh high, long enough that if you put your hands out either side you can run your fingertips across the top of the grass. It feels slightly wet because of the rain that's just happened and you walk slightly downhill and there's a cottage at the bottom. Single story, thatched roof, chimney with a small wisp of smoke coming out of the top, nice little wooden veranda and a white wooden front door. You're going to walk towards that cottage and as you get there you climb the steps, three steps up onto the veranda, the porch and then you open the white door and as you step into the white door the cottage transforms into your kitchen. So you can see your kitchen, the way it's laid out. Your eyes are still closed, but I bet you, you can see all of the detail of your kitchen. The fridge, the oven, the sides, the sink, the window, all of that. And I bet if I asked you now, without you going to your kitchen, how many doors does the fridge have? Do they open left to right or right to left? Is it a fridge freezer? What colour is your microwave? What colour are your cupboards? You've gone to that place in your mind. Okay, so when you're ready, open your eyes and join us back here again. And what I want you to do now is now you're in that nice, calm, relaxed state. You've proven your ability to visualize. I want you to spend some time thinking about what it is that you want. What is it that would make your life complete, make it worthwhile? Make it the best, best life you could ever possibly have. Now we're thinking big here. We're thinking things that you would have to give up your current life for. So you can't have both. So what is worthwhile giving up what you have now to step into? Could it be the bigger house? Could it be the collection of sports cars in the garage? Could it be the travelling the world? Could it be the starting your own business? Quitting your current job and working online? Quitting your current job and being your own boss? Writing that book you've always wanted to write? And then living off the royalties for the rest of your life because it was a number one bestseller within a week? Anything you can think of and anything you can see yourself doing in your mind, you can achieve in the real world. Hands down, full stop. If you can think it up here, you can make it with these. And the best part? You are the only thing that you need to get it done. You don't need anybody else. Everything that you need will come to you as you need it. But it starts off with your belief and the idea in your head. So that thing that you're picturing in your mind, that thing that you want more than anything else in the world, you can have that. And the only thing standing in your way is you. It's not him. It's not her. It's not them. It's not the country you live in. It's not the lack of funds that you've got. It's not the lack of time. The only limitation that you've got is you and your belief. I'm going to leave that with you right there. If you do want to know more, do register for my upcoming event this time next week, Ignite the Phoenix. I will drop the link into the comments in sh shortly when I click stop. <laughs> um, I thank you for joining me. I hope this has been helpful. 
if it has, please comment below, whether you're watching live or replay, I don't mind. Drop a comment below and let me know what you thought. I hope to see you at Ignite the Phoenix and I hope you have an awesome rest of your day. Take care. Bye.